Hear, feel, think. No matter how far he goes, man cannot resist looking back on the path he has walked. The untold stories and secrets of the past can be more alluring than the promise of tomorrow. And so he braves the forests of Raktika in search of mystery and wonder. Of Ronka, to which all seekers of hidden truths are inevitably drawn. We have arrived. Vast though these woods may be, they are, by and large, uninhabitable. Not so the swamps of Sidia, however, whose sparse foliage permitted man a foothold. No lands must remain beyond our grasp. Go forth, conquer, rule! Forgive me. A sudden pang of nostalgia for those halcyon days. Exploring virgin territories, subjugating primitive peoples, all for the glory of Garlemald. If you've brought your ivory standard, I'll be happy to tell you where to stick it. Can we not simply take a moment to enjoy the view together? Or would you rather I spied on you from the shadows? <sighs> Much more of this, and I may very well begin to regret my show of good faith. If you really want to stay, then help us fight. Mm, no, I think not. I am an observer, nothing more. Even shielded by the shadows of these boughs, I feel the light's presence most keenly. To accompany you is taxing enough. To fight is out of the question. I will suffer your company if I must, but not your commentary.
I see little sign of recent activity, nor hath any meaningful progress been made with the reconstruction. Mayhap Yishtola sought shelter elsewhere. Come, let us quit this place. Now! Surround them! These senators, they're not like the others. There's a reason for that. Lower your weapons, please. We mean you no harm. How is it they could speak? It's a sin eater trick. They mean to kill us all. Perhaps they speak the truth. That will seem a lot less amusing when we are forced to kill them. Oh, for the love of... I had hoped that by accompanying you, we might come to understand one another. But all I have come to understand is that you have a knack for inflaming the natives. You've committed the cardinal sin of boring me. And so, I retire to the shade. Good luck. Did you see that one disappear? Uh, I think I preferred La Habrea. Enough. Runar, report. Master Matoya! We apprehended them as you ordered, but are you certain these are Sin Eaters? The intense light of the ether I saw was unmistakable. If not Sin Eaters, then what? It is passing queer that Yishtola should mistake us for the enemy, is it not? Mayhap it hath been too long since last she beheld the radiance of thine ether. Master Matoya, hath time truly made strangers of us? Nay, I recognize you, Urianger, Thancred. And this is Minfilia of the First, of whom you spoke before. Just so. And knowing as thou must that we come in peace, might I prevail upon thee to have thy comrades lower their arms? First explain this other presence in your company, the one I know not. There is but one manner of creature in this world whose ether is suffused with such an abundance of light. Mine apologies, Master Matoya, but thou art mistaken. Before thee standeth our dearest comrade, the truest hero among us. Though she is but recently arrived here in the first, not one but Two Light Wardens have already perished by her most puissant hand. It, it cannot be.
Lost the Matoya? Lower your weapons. Forgive us this hostile welcome. Come. I would give you a proper introduction to Raktika and its people. Slitherbow is the largest of the blessed settlements. They worship no gods, instead revering darkness itself. It is a curious kind of faith, but one which has granted them the strength to persevere in the wake of the flood. I hope you weren't expecting a grand feast by way of welcome. They are simple people. Now, I would hear of your travels away from prying ears. Come. You seek the Light Warden of Raktika. In the days after I arrived in the first, I too relied upon the Crystal Exarch for guidance. But his penchant for secrecy and the telling of half truths soon lost him my trust, and thus did I strike out on my own. My work eventually led me here to the forest, which I have come to know like the back of my hand. I cannot say with certainty where your quarry is hiding, but I am confident I can narrow the search. Well, 
Go on then. Some few thousand years ago, this forest stood at the heart of the Empire of Ronka. A great many relics of that civilization can still be found to the east in Ixmaya. Or rather, could be found, were the area not fiercely guarded. Ixmaya, you see, is home to a tribe of warriors whose lineage is said to date back to the time of the Empire. Any attempt to enter their territory is met with lethal force. They offer no warnings and suffer no trespasser to escape. Needless to say, my every attempt to survey the area has been thwarted. Mayhap the Warden hideth there, full knowing none may approach it for fear of these protectors. As for the tablet, I find the timing of its discovery suspiciously convenient. If I did not know better, I would think someone was trying to curry favor with me. Regardless, it will take time to decipher these writings. Yet I would not be at all surprised if they somehow held the key to entering Ixmaya unmolested. The Exarch has a nose for serendipity. If there is aught I can do to assist thee in unraveling their secrets, thou needst only ask. Thank you, Urianger. I may well take you up on that offer. While we set to work, might I suggest you take a tour of the city? Should you be in any doubt as to the importance of your role as the Warrior of Darkness, the people here will surely cure you of it. I must say, Stola, while most of us have struggled to come to terms with our altered circumstances, you seem to have adapted rather well. Lest you forget, Master Matoya and I dedicated our lives to uncovering the truth which hides at the heart of our world. Though separate, the fate of this reflection is nevertheless bound to that of our home. That I would be daunted by such an invaluable opportunity is absurd. But what of you, Thancred? Could it be that you are still struggling to come to terms with the nature of your young companion? My struggles are none of your concern. Quite why you would speak thus and in this company, I do not know. Perhaps you left more of yourself back in the source than I assumed, if you'll excuse me. He understands that I'm not the same. But I'm not her. Understands, perhaps, but does not accept. The question being whether he ever will. And whether you will, more importantly. As difficult as your circumstances may be, they are yours, not his. Tis you and you alone who bears ultimate responsibility for your life. But you need not make any hard choices now. Why not go and get some fresh air, clear your head? <laughs> 